Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another book on cassette tape to play for you. The, today book is Wonder Woman, Cheetah on the Prowl from 1982. So let's get from civilization, hidden deep within the Bermuda Triangle, there is an island unlike any other. It is called Paradise Island, and, true to its name, it is a paradise. Only women live on this island, a race of females who are as beautiful as they are powerful. They are called Amazons. The gods who watch over them have taught them how to live peacefully and happily with one another. At the top of Paradise Island's highest peak stands a majestic temple. It was there that Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, called to the gods. For many days, Queen Hippolyta had repeated her wish to Aphrodite, the beautiful goddess of love, but she never received a reply. Still, the noble queen refused to give up hope, and each day returned to her mountaintop temple. There, she pleaded to the sky, Please, oh goddess, appear before me. There is something I need to ask of you. Please, your willing and faithful servant calls me. Suddenly, the cloud of smoke rising from the temple altar seemed to grow bigger, filling the room with billows of gray mist. I need to learn the secret of modeling life from the enchanted clay. The queen replied. There are no children here on Paradise Island, and the Amazons will need a princess to rule this land when I am away. The misty figure hung silently in the air for a moment, thinking. Then the goddess spoke again. Take the enchanted clay and model the figure of the child you want. When it is complete, I shall return to fulfill your wish. Then, in a swirl of smoke, the goddess vanished. As the days passed, Hippolyta worked long and hard on the clay statue of the child. Often she sculpted late into the night, making sure each detail on the figure was just right. She will be my daughter, Hippolyta mused. And someday she will be queen of the Amazons. She must be perfect. Her work finished, Hippolyta returned to the temple altar, placing the clay figure of the child in its center. Again she prayed to the goddess of love. Aphrodite, I have done as you have commanded. The child is complete and she is very beautiful. Now, O oh goddess, please touch her with your gift of life. The figure on the pedestal began to change before the queen's astonished eyes. The clay seemed to soften, to ripple with life, as its color changed from a lightless gray to a warm pink. Then, it began to move. Goddess, Hippolyta whispered in a thankful voice as the happy child jumped from the pedestal into her mother's arms. Overjoyed, Hippolyta spoke to the child. You are my daughter, and one day you will be queen of Paradise Island. I shall name you Diana. After the goddess of the hunt, your strength and beauty will be greater than that of any other Amazon. Although she was only minutes old, the little Amazon seemed to understand the queen's every word. It 
took only a short time for the women of Paradise Island to know and love the newest addition to their homeland. Hippolyta must be very proud of the young princess that Aphrodite has given her. Yes, the child grows stronger and more beautiful with each passing day. Indeed, the young Diana was a truly amazing Amazon. Within weeks of her arrival, she was already strong enough to uproot the mightiest tree. And the loyal and happy subjects of Paradise Island would often see her frolicking through the forest with the island's wildflowers. The child would outrace the swiftest deer without even losing her breath. It was clear to all who witnessed each of the princess's astounding feats, she was destined to be the greatest Amazon they had ever known. respiration. But when she removed the helmet, both Amazons were stunned. What? Why, well, she's not a woman at all. What kind of human is that? I, I think it's a man. Mother told me about them, but I've never seen one myself. He, he's quite handsome. But man or woman, we've got to get help. He's barely alive. Without a moment's hesitation, Diana carried the pilot to the island's hospital. There, using advanced medical treatments and machinery, a team of Amazon doctors worked frantically to save the man's faltering life. The tags around his neck say his name is Steve Trevor. And Diana said softly to the busy physicians, Please tell me, will he live? We're doing all we can to save him. One of the doctors replied, But he swallowed a lot of water. We've done our best. The rest is up to him. The doctor looked up at Diana and saw the sorrow in her eyes. Princess, there's nothing you can do here. She said kindly. But Diana would not leave. I'd like to stay by his side if you don't mind. She said as she solemnly gazed at the still body of Colonel Steve Trevor. watched the scene unfolding in the hospital from the monitor in her throne room. She could not fail to notice the twinkle of love in Princess Diana's eyes. Deeply troubled, Hippolyta called to the goddess of love, asking for her guidance. The unspeakable has happened. For the first time in untold centuries, a man has come to Paradise Island. Already our lives have been changed. My daughter has begun to feel love for the one known as Steve Trevor. Aphrodite, has this man come to destroy our peaceful lives here? 
Suddenly, a cool, misty breeze swept through the room. The goddess Aphrodite appeared. Be silent, my queen, and I shall put your fears to rest. I have sent the man called Steve Trevor to your island of Amazons, and with good reason. The world outside is torn with war and hate, and the future of the very planet is at stake. Steve Trevor will live to go back to his homeland, but he must be accompanied by your strongest and wisest subject. Select your champion, Hippolyta. For she must join mankind to combat all the evils that threaten to destroy the peace of the entire Earth. The next day, Queen Hippolyta announced a contest to decide which Amazon would take Steve Trevor back to his homeland, a place called the United States. After the proclamation had been made, Hippolyta called Diana to her side. Diana? She said sternly. I forbid you to enter the tournament. It is your destiny to rule Paradise Island. If you were to win and leave with Colonel Trevor, your fellow Amazons might someday be left without a leader. I'm sorry, but my decision is final. But outside the throne room, Diana came up with an idea. I hate to go against my mother's wishes, but I can't bear to let Steve Trevor return to his society with anyone but me. <gasps> I'll disguise myself so Mother won't recognize me. Then I'll be able to enter the contest. The next morning, the games began. Trumpets blared as the group of competing Amazons entered the stadium. Each Amazon was proud to be a part of the contest, but as they walked by Hippolyta's throne, that one contestant wore a mask to hide her identity. No one knew the Princess Diana had entered the contest, and only a few noticed the mystery contestant among the other hopefuls. But soon, every Amazon would wonder who she was. As soon as the contests began, the audience knew what the final outcome would be. The mystery contestant won every possible test, from wrestling and running to jousting and the boomerang toss. No other Amazons would come close to beating her in even a single event. This class marvel was truly the Amazon champion. Close of the contest, Hippolyta awarded the crown of victory to the last champion. Congratulations! The queen said. You have proven yourself to be the strongest and most agile of all the Amazons. Now is the time to show us who you really are. Princess Diana removed her mask, revealing herself to the queen. George, it, it's you. Yes, mother. Diana answered, feeling guilty and determined to do what she thought was right. I'm sorry, but this is something I have to do. I love Steve Trevor, and I must return to the United States with him. I know my happy life here with the Amazons is over. But it is now my duty to save the world from destruction. Hippolyta thought for a moment, considering the courageous woman who stood before her. Forcing back her sadness, the queen smiled weakly and spoke. I am proud of you, Diana. You are truly our bravest Amazon. I made this costume for the winner to use when she journeyed to the United States. You have won the right to wear it with pride. There are other things I must give you, but first... She said, turning to the crowd. Let us celebrate. With that, the Amazons lifted Diana onto their shoulders and paraded her proudly around the stadium. The spectators cheered wildly.
When the festivities were over, Diana received the gifts she would need in her battle against evil. First, Hippolyta gave her a magic lariat that would make any person rope within it follow the princess's every command. Then the queen pointed to the sky, where a beautiful transparent plane hovered silently over the assembled Amazons. You will use this robot plane to take Steve Trevor home. He is already inside. The plane cannot be seen by mortal eyes, and it makes no sound. You have but to give it an order, and it will obey. A tear began to form in Hippolyta's eye as Diana prepared to leave. She was going to miss her daughter. Her voice choked with emotion. The queen spoke for a final time. From this day on, you will be known as one The robot plane was soaring high in the air. Wonder Woman looked back for the final time to see a cheering crowd of Amazons wave goodbye. Perhaps this is the wrong thing I do, she thought to herself. Perhaps I do belong in Paradise Island. But one look at Steve Trevor lying silently at her side convinced her that she was doing the right thing. Soon, the robot plane was hovering above an army hospital in a city called Washington, D.C. With Steve Trevor in her arms, the Amazon princess jumped from the plane. Floating down on the air currents, she landed softly on the hospital lawn. The hospital staff didn't know what to make of this flying woman, but when she said, This man needs your help, they rushed to assist her. <laughs> Colonel Trevor, in good hands, Wonder Woman was free to begin her mission. But she still wanted to be near the man she loved. After some thought, she decided... I'll become an army nurse. That way, I can see Steve Trevor every day and still be free to combat evil. Now, in the identity of Lieutenant Diana Prince, Wonder Woman was able to watch Steve's condition improve and, as his nurse, could check on him daily. Soon, Trevor was smiling and talking to Diana, mostly about the television reports he had seen and his own faint memories of the superheroine who had brought him to the hospital. Isn't Wonder Woman wonderful? He would say to Diana, never knowing that he was talking to the amazing Amazon in person. After he recovered, Steve prepared to leave the hospital. Well, um, I guess this is it, Diana. Just then, Steve had an idea. Say, how would you like to be my assistant? I could use someone like you. I mean, you're no Wonder Woman, but what mortal woman is? Diana simply smiled, and in a quiet voice said, I'll take it. Within months, Diana had been promoted to captain. She was proud of herself. Now she was a success in both the world of the Amazons and in the world of man. Steve escorted her to her new office. Well, Captain, here it is, he proclaimed. But don't get too comfortable. We're off to Montana on an intelligence mission. Be ready to fly in 15 minutes. Before Diana even knew what was happening, she and Steve were whisked off on a ship bound for a secret destination in the wilds of Montana. As they prepared to land, Diana gasped in awe at the spectacular sight that was spread out before her eyes. The white concrete buildings of Marsden Air Force Base reflected the early morning sun, sending shafts of light back into the crisp blue sky. The walls of the newly built dam, restraining tons of water, loomed over the military installation. Only a few top officers were aware of the base's existence, and even they were unsure of what went on here. The whole thing was a mystery. Diana was curious. As Diana and Steve got on the plane, a man in a general's uniform rushed up to greet them. Diana could see that the general was very upset. That's General Peters, Steve whispered to Diana. But I've never seen him look so disorganized before. Something big must be up. Something that the general couldn't handle himself. 
Sure enough, as the general escorted Steve and Diana through the base, he told them of a series of disasters that had perplexed everyone. Someone's been destroying our new test planes, the general said nervously. We call them Dynasonics, and they are designed to be the fastest planes ever built. But they're being blown up before we can test them. We've tried to stop the saboteurs, but nothing seems to work. I can't trust anyone, not even the soldiers guarding the Dynasonic. I'm at the end of my rope. I need you to capture the saboteurs. I want you to personally guard the Dynasonic. You'll have men guarding the runway outside, but I don't want anyone except you two in the hangar with that plane. Late that night, Wonder Woman paid a visit to the hangar where the Dynasonic was kept. She knew Steve was supposed to be guarding the huge aircraft, but when she arrived, Steve appeared to be sleeping. Wonder Woman was worried. Steve was a top intelligence officer. He would never fall asleep while on duty. This must be the work of the saboteurs. Wonder Woman thought. But the Dynasonic is still safe and sound. Puzzled as she was, the Amazon princess did not have time to think about this strange new development. She had to make sure Steve was safe. She was so concerned that she did not notice a mysterious figure slinking out of the airplane hangar. Okay, so so that was part one of Wonder Woman Cheetah on the Prowl from 1982. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We'll have another video coming out real soon.